Hello and welcome to the tutorial on France's development between 987 and 1328. So this kind of mirrors the development in England. So we're looking at more or less the same time period as the previous video, which explained how democratic processes emerged in England, but we're looking at this in France. So uh, the main concepts you need to understand are the Capetian dynasty, um, that Paris becomes the center of this dynasty, and the democratic innovations that arise during this time period. You can find the information uh, that, uh, about this period in your book on page 296-97. Okay, so the first king to begin the Capetian dynasty was called Hugh Capet. He took over after the last king in the Carolinian dynasty died. Um, he came to power in 987 AD and he was a very weak ruler. However, he was successful due to the location of his territory, uh, the center of the territory being Paris. As Paris was located um, on many trade routes and had an important fair, it made it easier for the king to expand the territory of his uh, dynasty. And here's a map showing the territory that the Capetian dynasty ended up conquering. Um, you can look at the legend in order to interpret the map, and it's good practice for your map analysis skills. The next and very successful king in the Capetian dynasty was Philip II. Hopefully you remember who he is. Have a think about it. Well, he tried to participate in the Third Crusade along with Richard the Lionheart and Barbarossa, and if you remember correctly, he ended up going home, so he never actually fought in it. But he was a very successful king and expanded the territory... Uh, of the Capetian dynasty greatly during his reign. One of the most important things that he does is regain the land lost by his father to Henry II of England. So his father, Philip II's father, Louis VII, lost the part of France called Normandy to England against Henry II of England. You should remember from the previous video. Do you remember what Henry II did with regards to democratic processes? Well, he implemented the juries, which also led to common law, if you remember. And he also conquered Normandy from the French. Well, Philip II gets back this land in 1204. He also starts more um, kind of democratic processes which strengthen the power of the monarch by sending out bailiffs, also known as royal officials, all around his kingdom to look over the courts and to collect the taxes for the king. So this way it meant the king had more power and was able to know uh, better what was going on in his kingdom. The next important king in the Capetian dynasty is Louis IX. Um, he implemented something called the Appeals Court. Okay, the Appeals Court were courts set up by the king which could overturn decisions made by the local courts. So, for example, if a local judge in a local court made a decision and then the person prosecuted decided it wasn't fair or there was more evidence that needed to be looked at, they could go to the appeals court and ask the king's officials to reconsider the decision. This was an important development because it gave the king more power again um, over the lords who would be controlling the local courts. And this is another step that kind of broke down the feudal system. Finally, we move on to Philip IV, who ruled between 1285 and 1314. He's probably the most important of all the kings in the Capetian dynasty because he um, implements the most democratic process of them all, the Estates General. The Estates General uh, is more or less equivalent to the parliament that was informed in England. So we had the model parliament in England and the Estates General is similar. So I'll tell you the story of how this came about. So firstly, Philip IV and the Pope have a disagreement. They disagree over taxes. The Pope tells Philip IV that his priests and clergy don't have to pay taxes to the king because they should only be loyal to the Pope. But Philip IV insists he disagrees with the Pope and says the clergy do have to pay taxes. It's his country, he's the king, and they have to do so. In order to get more support for this um, decision that Philip IV is taking, he calls together um, 
representatives of his people so that they can agree with him. This is a similar uh, process to what happened with Edward I in England. Okay, the, the using representatives to meet and make decisions with the king was already in practice like it was in England. However, the thing that Philip IV changes is that he calls commoners also. These, this means people from the lower classes are also called in order to give him more support. And so this is the beginning of the Estates General being divided into three different sections or estates. And I'm going to outline here in the slide what each estate consisted of. So as you can see, we end up with the first estate made of the church officials, the second estate with the lords, and the third estate, the commoners, landowners, merchants, etc. This is a big difference from the English Parliament system. Okay, so here are some revision questions based on the presentation. You should pause the video and work your way through them all, and there will be some more on the next slide. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope you found it helpful and enjoy studying.